I've just spent seven days on the road shooting a mountain bike event for a TV show using my DJI Inspire and here's my thoughts on that week. Hi, I'm Grant, and whenever you watch any sort of review such as this on the web, um, it's always good to have a context in what their gear was being used for because there's no two situations that are the same. So I was part of a six person crew and we were following a seven day mountain biking event, shooting it for a one hour TV show and a daily highlights package. My job was as a main camera operator and also as the drone operator where we were allowed to use it. Firstly, here is a quick cut of my favorite shots from the event with the drone. This mountain biking event involved a lot of back country or, or areas that were only accessible by four wheel drives. So therefore the gear had to be packed fairly robust because it was getting bounced around on the back of the ute. It also needed to be assembled and dismantled quickly so I could get to a location, set up my drone, capture my shots, pack it all back down again to put in the truck and then move on to the next location. I'll put a link below in the description to the race organizers Vimeo page where we did daily highlight video packages and you can see some of the drone footage as well as other stuff that we were shooting. So my thoughts on using the DJI Inspire every day for seven days doing event coverage in fairly sort of rough or remote locations is that it was fantastic. It did not miss a beat. It was quick to assemble and dissemble to put back into the truck. I pretty much got the shots that I needed. Even though I have the dual remotes for my DJI Inspire, I mostly used it as a single operator and that was fine for pretty much 95 or 99% of the, st of the shots that I needed to get. When we had a little bit more time on the second to last day, I did get the second remote out for um, a camera assistant to help me um, pointing the camera while I flew the Inspire. But I generally find that if you're working with two people, you, you probably need to practice with them a little bit um, a little bit more because I found probably the most important thing when you when you have two operators on the drone is communication so that you both know the type of shot you're after so I can fly and the operator knows the move that we need so without practice it's probably well, I was more efficient using it by myself rather than with a two-person crew. In my Inspire kit I had six batteries and I found that was generally pretty good. I had two charges which I'd immediately put on batteries to recharge once we got to the finish line because they had power and I could start charging and that was a good way to recycle more batteries because it's always an issue is basically enough battery power and recycling your battery powers for shooting the following day. The only other non-standard accessories I had with me on the shoot was a set of eight Polar Pro filters for the camera. My go-to Polar Pro filter for the shoot was the ND8 circular polar filter. This allowed me to get my shutter speed down to 1 100th because I was generally running it at 50 frames a second on 1080. Also bear in mind that it is high summer here in New Zealand so that's what I found worked best. While we're on the subject of filters, I also have a set of the Renat, I think that's how you pronounce filters that you see that are quite popular on the DJI Inspire forums. And I was quite unhappy with these, especially in our high, we get high UV here in summer and I was finding strong color casts with these filters, which would give me really weird color, even with manual white balance locked on my Inspire. The Polar Pro filters gave me a much better or more consistent look on normal white, manual white balance settings. For this job I also had to fly up to Christchurch which is a, it's only like a less than an hour's flight away from where I live here. But I found that your DJI Inspire standard case that it comes in is, is not that great for air travel or getting bounced around the back of a ute. So my best value accessory for this job was 
a $10 suitcase which I got from the Salvation Army that my whole Inspire backpack there fits into. I could then put it in here and it happily got bounced around while I was flying on the aeroplane and more importantly in the back of the ute for the whole week with all the other camera gear. It was fantastic. If money was no object, the only other accessory I would have loved to have had on this job would have been the Pally case where you can store the Inspire in full landing mode. Having to put the feet down, put it in its case, put the feet up to assemble it again every time slows the process down a bit, so that would have been fantastic. I'm just editing the footage together and I forgot to add one of my top tips I've just realised. So my top tip as you'll see in this shot is that once the drone was down I'd burn my battery I started using the camera as a handheld gimbal to get some of these passing shots which you've just seen and it worked really well. So top tip you don't have to have your drone in the air to get some great shots. Overall though I have to say that the Inspire did not miss a beat on the 7 days on the road and I really enjoyed using it and I cannot recommend it highly enough. Oh.